Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're on page 137 talking about the box model and padding and the little shortcut technique that we use to uh, make this a little bit shorter. So when it comes to, to padding and margin, where it's numbers, then it's just the hands of the clock. So that's easy to remember. This stuff over here, you know, there's one like this for font. There's one like for border and, and I, half the time I don't remember them all. I have, to, I have to rely on the tool to tell me the order the things show up in. Okay, starting on page 138 and going on for a couple of pages is a list of a bunch of, and this is not all of them, there's a bunch of these things, a bunch of the CSS attributes that can be applied. And we're going to go through some of them here, not all of them. All right, <clears throat> so um, let's continue. On page uh, 142, they finally start talking about adding photographs uh, to your page. Okay, so... Um, before we get to adding photographs, we really need to talk a little bit about the technical details of these file formats. I know it's a little weird, but just bear with me. So, graphic files, if I go here to my pictures, so I've got some, some pictures here, and um, they all have, if I, if I right click on this guy and, and get some information about it, this guy, well I can see right now, it's about 3,000 by 2,000. So it's a pretty good size, pretty good size uh, image. It's got a bunch of colors and it's about 9 meg, which is not terrible. Okay. So I need to know a little bit about this. So what are the attributes, so to speak, of graphic files? Well, some graphic for file formats provide more than others. So let's just go through the, the list of attributes. One is transparency. Some graphic files allow you to have a transparent background. So for example, here, uh, perhaps I wanted to have this colorful gauge, but not have the background part, if, if I had a blue background and put this on here, this wouldn't be white. It would be have a transparent layer and let you go through there. So some graphics files allow you to have transparency. But almost always, we're talking about the background transparency. Some don't. Animation. Some graphic files allow you to have animation. Remember that goofy thing I had up and running uh, here? That is an animated GIF file. Okay, it's just a little goofy little animation. Uh, and some file formats allow it and some do not. Compression. Some file formats are better at doing compression than others. Um, there'll be a way... Most, most photographs... Um, are, are automatically compressed well, like when they come off your camera. And that's a good thing because the raw image is monstrously huge. But you kind of get to pick that level of compression you want. You go, well, you know, I don't know how, how much, I, you know, how, how lossy you want the compression to be. So some file formats allow you to just turn the knob up and down or wherever you want. And some of the others are designed to be lossless, which means, yeah, they're compressed, but you don't lose any quality whatsoever. You normally don't use that type on photographs, per se, but you could. Um, optimization. Uh, there's a lot of weird things that you have to be able to do. For example, if I was to put this in our web page, which I'm going to do here in just a minute, that's going to put a 7 meg file in there. And, you know, I probably need to be able to scrunch that down to something a little smaller. Here's one that's only 800 by 5 feet. 533 and here's a tiny one that's only 150 by 100 so i i have them called thumb thumbnail right a small and and the regular size one looking at it from this scale you can't tell the difference so you need a, a graphics program that can go in and resize images the number of colors that are supported some some file formats are are really kind of minimal and they'll they're kind of made for like 256 colors like this, I can get away with 256 colors here, but not here. And then the the pixel density. Uh, most web pages don't have great resolution, and so you can't really. You if you wanted to show someone a, a big photograph, then you you're probably going to have to do something a little different. The next one talks about interlacing, and interlacing is just a way to speed up the, the viewing of the, of the page. In the old days, when we were on dial-up. And you wanted to see the, some some picture of porn. I mean, uh, some photograph. Um, what it would do is it would it would load like start loading the image, and you, in the old days you could watch it, 
and it would look, you know, one little stripe as it goes through, and it, and it filled out this image, and it's pretty grainy. And then when it finished at the bottom, it came back and did the second line, and then it became more and more clear as it went through. The idea is, if you were very interested in the in the photo, well, you just sat back and waited. But if you weren't, we well, you just click on it and move on. I mean, you know, words. Don't punish me. Don't don't force me to download this huge file that I'm not really going to look at. Okay, so that's interlacing. It's behind the scenes. It's a way to have the image just start out looking fuzzy and then get progressively better as things get fed to your web page. That's what it's all about. Okay, so the first one on the list is GIF, the graphic interchange format. Um, there was some drama in the early days that there were some lawsuits and copyright and who owns the patent and all sorts of weird stuff and I think thankfully most all of that is over now and uh, you can use GIF format without too much trouble it does support transparency it does support animation in fact it's one of the few that does support animation uh, it is lossless which is cool uh, tip it was designed for 256 colors although it'll do more than that but it was, you can kind of sort of tell, it was designed for 256 colors. It does do interlace, which is kind of cool. Okay. The next one is JPEG. JPEG is probably the one that most cameras produce because of the, the compression. So it is a lossy compression. Now that doesn't mean that it's bad because the difference between 95% uh, compression versus 100, 100, you know, no compression, that didn't make sense. 95% quality and 100% quality where there's no, most humans can't tell the difference. And yet the difference in size would be significant. Yes, you can use millions of colors, you know, 16 million colors with no trouble at all. Yes, it is. It has a progressive, which is essentially just a different term for using for interlace. Um, so yes, I use, I use JPEG files. And the last one is PNG, Portable Network Graphics. I tend to use PNG exclusively if I can get away with it. Um, and it's it's really the best of both worlds. Um, it has all the attributes that we want except for animation, which I don't much care. Um, so it's it came out about the time that the GIF was going through, you know, their legal troubles. Somebody came up with the PNG sort of like as as an alternative, saying, okay, for if if we're not going to be able to use GIF because of this legal bullshit then here's PNG and you're home free. That's when I started using it. I've used it that way ever since. On page 144, there's a table there on the bottom right hand, uh, left hand side that shows all the attributes and which all these things. That Does that look like fertile ground for test questions to you? Yeah, you might want to make a note. That's some good stuff. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about this stuff, let's go put some stuff all right, so I'm going to scoot on down here and I'm going to create me another paragraph. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to say in there. Who cares? Oh, hey, I know what I'm going to do. Here is my cat. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm going to put an image tag here. IMG. Okay, image. Um, if I go ahead and close this thing off, you can see that it's, it's one of those self-closing tags. All right, so I'm gonna go here and say image space. And one of the first things it's gonna prompt you for, and by the way, the order of these attributes really doesn't matter, but just by convention, the first one is gonna be source, SRC equals. And then you're gonna be able to go in, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on this. This is, this is a navigation structure, it's a little weird. Um, this will allow me to, well, okay. <clears throat> This might be a little difficult to explain. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to go to my uh, my, my cat photo here. And uh, I'm just going to drag and drop this thing onto this solution. Okay? I'm just going to grab and drop this guy on. Okay. That way I don't have to go drill for it. Because we haven't really talked about how to drill for, for our images yet. So and to, to avoid that conversation. All right. Now we're going to try this one more time. Let me try this with uh, source equals. Yeah, there we go. It shows up on the list that way. I don't, all right, cool. So I say boing. All right, let's just try this and see what it looks like. 
So, and what the hell is that? Well, that's my nose, and that's the edge of my glasses. That does not make for a very good picture, does it? I mean, yeah, I guess you could have scrolled down and scrolled over, but isn't it fairly obvious that this is not exactly what I had in mind? Okay, so one of the things that we need to do here is we need to tell it how big we want this thing to be. So I could go in here and say that the width is, I don't know, 200. And that the height is 100. Actually, I'm going to make the height ridiculous. I want to make it like 50. I want to make this 300. Okay. All right, let's see what that looks like. And once again, that is not exactly right. Because I've destroyed the aspect ratio of, of my image. I can't, it's no longer square. I've, I've messed it up. So I really kind of sort of need to know what the size of my image is. And so I don't mess up the thing. All right. I want to talk a little bit about what we just saw. Here's what's really, really happening. When this guy says, here's my source, your web browser is gonna pull down that entire seven megabyte file. It's gonna pull it down to your browser. And after it arrives at your browser, your browser is gonna say, ah, oh, hell, I need to resize this thing to make it fit on the screen. So am I wasting energy doing that? If I, if, particularly if you're on a slow link, I'm sending you a file that's this big, and then once you get it, you chop it up and make it this big? Why don't I just send you the right size file to begin with? Wouldn't that make one heck of a lot more sense? Okay. So I'm gonna drag some more of these guys. I'm gonna grab the small one, and I'm gonna drag the thumbnail one. Okay. So I'm gonna go here and, uh, well, let's let's go back to here and find out how big this guy is. He is um, one more time. He is eight hundred by five three three. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go back to here and say this is Annie. Now it's Annie Small, and it's eight hundred by five thirty three. Now let's render it and see what it looks like. And ta-da, it's about the right size. Yay, everything is square, it fits on the screen. And I didn't deluge you with a file this big. I'm Now I'm only sending you a file the exact size it's supposed to be. Okay. All right, we're not quite done with this. There's a, a lot of gotchas here. And so let's talk about the gotchas. In order to make this thing accessible with, with piece of people with disabilities, you must put an alternate tag in. And the alternate tag is what they're gonna hear from their from their screen reader, or if you have graphics turned off, you know, sometimes you have uh, devices you know, like the old Blackberry that, that, you know, you could see a web page, but it just turned all the graphics off. So what's gonna appear in lieu of the graphic? Well, I'm gonna put in a description here, something like uh, me feeding my cat. All right, this is required. Should I say that again? Yeah, this is required. You're going to be grading, graded on whether or not you're actually doing the accessibility things correctly. The other thing is that I have to know the size of these things. And to tell you the truth, the, the authoring software really isn't going to help you. You're going to need some other piece of software to take a big image and scrunch it up not using Visual Studio for that. You're gonna use some other graphics program and I'm not gonna to bother to describe, you know, all the hundreds of graphic programs out there that you can use. But some program, most likely not your web authoring software, is gonna be used to resize the graphics. Okay, we've reached the 15 minute mark. So we're gonna pause this and be back in just a few.